Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar that will run through the UK Met Office run, have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days as we have cooling conditions at the moment after incredibly hot conditions yesterday with this cold front spreading through many areas of England, Wales and the Republic of Ireland bringing some very heavy rain and potentially some thunderstorms as we head through this afternoon into this evening. For most though it will be heavy widespread precipitation precipitation on and off but really widespread and it does look like as i said there could be some lightning within this as well later then we'll have a look uh, of course at those temperatures as we head into next week as yes it's cooling down at the moment but we could see another temperature spike towards the middle of this coming working week uh, with temperatures getting back towards the mid to high 20s not quite as hot as the last day or so but still very warm we'll then have a look at the various longer range models as it does look like Yes, the next five to seven days it remains around or above average in terms of temperatures, mid-twenties for quite a few. But in the longer term, towards the end of June, start of July, we return back towards average or even below average for some with more Atlantic air flows and less of this sort of southerly influence we have at the moment. Just remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So, if we do look at the live radar, you can see there is a lot of precipitation around at the moment as that very hot air gets swept away. Now, yesterday we saw a official peak temperature of 32.7 degrees, for an, if we saw it in a few places. Now, unofficially, I saw reports of 33 to 34 degrees from amateur weather stations. So, I do think the peak temperature was around what we expected, around that 33 to 34 degree range. Not quite reaching 35 degree range, what we thought was possible but i think 33 to 34 degrees was the sort of the peak temperature but as I said, officially it was 32.7 degrees so very hot especially pre-solstice um, and for this time in june very hot indeed and luckily it is now being swept away we're going to see low to mid 40s across parts of france and spain where we have all this dry weather we still get this high pressure with big hot air mass but as you can look at the uk some very heavy pulses of rain moving through and you can see it's not completely persistent in terms of there's a lot of gaps within the precipitation as this weather front is forming at the moment and that's why there's a lot of uh, a lot of uncertainty with this because it is as i said forming the precipitation is getting heavier and more widespread you can see already some yellows and reds forming which is torrential downpours and the precipitation is moving southwest to northeastwards along this cold front which is very slowly moving south eastwards in terms of the general area and so you can see these darker greens and lighter colors which could be the very heavy thundery rain we see later it is starting to approach and that heavy thundery rain is most likely in east anglia central southern england southeast england over the course of this evening as the weather front does eventually sweep away now we did expect potentially mid to high 20s in the far southeast but this precipitation as i said is pepping up a lot more than we initially anticipated we thought it was generally just going to be along the midlands southern parts of wales at least until later this afternoon but i'm recording this around 1 p.m and already we're seeing these showers move in so that could not be good signs for later indicating there's more more energy uh, and more more uplift within the atmosphere than the models have anticipated it is moving through quite quickly uh, so it's going to be a lot of on and off rain for these areas over the course of this afternoon um, further northwards and westwards it's much drier a few showers in western scotland but it is much cooler still muggy ahead of the main weather front um, so where you see this persistent band that's where the main weather front where the big dividing line is Further south and east than that, it is raining for some, but it's still muggy out there. So, if we do have a look at those two meter temperatures, and you can see it's still very warm in the far southeast. Um, as I said, still got these reds showing up. Now, they're going to fade as the weather front moves southwards and eastwards and precipitation moves in. But you can see, where well, I said, that dividing line through the Midlands, that's where that colder air is moving in. Still a bit warm ahead, uh, uh, sort of behind it, um, where we see sunshine, but nowhere near this high 20s we can still see in the south and southeast. So see, if you are in that London area, East Anglia, into central, southern and southeast England, it's still quite warm out there, but it will degrade in temperatures. Now you can see that hot air mass is still very much across France, and we're seeing mid 
40s today, 44, 45 degrees is possible in a few spots and widely around that 40 degree range. So that hot air is getting swept away, but it's not far away uh, at all. Um, so very, very hot indeed. Uh, and that's going to be fueling this rain uh, and thundery precipitation over the course of the next few hours. So if we do have a look at the UK Met Office and have a look at what it's showing for precipitation and temperature over the next five days, you can see that weather front forming and you can see it as of 1pm it's a lot more widespread and this is making out to be. You can see the main sort of weather front there and it's much more heavy and widespread than this So that's why I said whatever we see here is likely to be a little bit more intense and a little bit more widespread just simply because of how it's playing out in real time. So as we head towards the, uh, this evening, you see it does pep up even more and potentially turn heavy and thunder in the far south and southeast. So that's why we've got to keep an eye on this and do suspect we could be seeing some surprises later. Again, it's not a widespread thunderstorm outbreak by any means, but it's heavy, thundery rain. Um, so it could be providing some big, big downpours for some. Beyond that, it does move away, but we always have the threat of heavy thundery rain in the south and southwest through Sunday. So we've still got disturbances in, milling around the channel. So we could see some very heavy rain there, or it could just stay offshore. It's uncertain uh, with that. But you can see just milling around the far south coast through tomorrow morning and into the afternoon and evening, potentially moving more into the far southwest into the afternoon, into the evening. And again, you can see a line of heavy rain, maybe some thundery hours there for you Sunday evening but as we head into Monday it's much drier more fresher outlook but those temperatures will start to recover as the upper air temperatures start to slowly increase as we head into Tuesday some more precipitation moving in from the northwest but still pretty dry for most of England and Wales and those temperatures will rise once again towards the mid-20s and that continues into Wednesday as well A very dry day once again and again into Thursday and the reason for this is if we have a look at the upper air temperatures you can see much cooler temperatures are moving in from the northwest at the moment much hotter in the far southeast but as we head towards tomorrow afternoon you see those temperatures are much cooler widely yes holding on to that very warm air just in the far southeast but with thicker cloud around and some precipitation it's not going to feel all too hot and you see widely 10 to 15 degrees below what we saw on friday in terms of upper air temperatures but as we head towards Monday, more widespread, warmer upper air temperatures, more towards 6, 7, 8 degrees at 850 HPA. By Tuesday, 8, 9, 10 degrees. And by Wednesday, getting up towards 10, 11, 12 degrees at 850 HPA. And it's widespread. So the warmth isn't just going to be in the far southeast, it will be widespread. So if you have a look at those max temperatures you can see today, still 25 plus degrees in the far southeast, maybe hotter. And you can see across France, parts of France, mid to high 30s, 40 degrees further southwards. As we head to towards tomorrow's peak temperatures, you can see 18 to 20 degrees, 21 degrees perhaps in Yorkshire, very warm um, for some, but further south and eastwards compared to Friday, a good 10 to 15 degrees cooler. As we head towards Monday, those temperatures will rise a little bit once again by a couple degrees, widely 20 to 22 degrees, and by Tuesday, widely 22 to 24 degrees for quite a few and maybe getting slightly higher than that and said by wednesday 26 27 maybe 28 degrees as possible and you can't rule out an ice day 29 or 30 degrees come the middle of this working week so yeah big big uncertainty uh come in the middle of this week in terms of those temperatures it is increasing but it does look like it will be very warm indeed, so if you are not enjoying this muggy warm weather, it's not good signs, because this coming week, it looks like it's going to be widely warm. Not hot, no 30 plus degrees, but this sort of mid to high 20s still feel very warm. Luckily though, those lows overnight will be cooler, around that sort of 14, 15 degree range, instead of sort of the 18, 19 degree we have seen the last couple of days. Days. So this warm weather isn't going away. It is staying warm over the next five days, possibly next seven days, but not quite as hot. So more in terms of sort of the warmer, drier weather, I think more people prefer. But if you are not liking this hotter weather, it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. But luckily we're seeing signs within the 10 day time frame, 7 to 10 day time frame, of it turning much cooler. 
So, if we do have a look at the mid to long range, have a look at the GFS, GM, Eastern Drift, and the Ensemble just showing, the low pressure spreading in at the moment, for high pressure topples for the middle of this week, and we sort of mill around in sort of a warmish air mass. Now, the, the direction of the air is not coming from the south or southwest yet, uh, sorry, the south or southeast, so that hot air is staying out in Europe, but generally Atlantic air isn't too cool this time of year, and it's pretty stagnant, very low wind speeds, which means that air gets to warm up, so we're going to see warmer conditions next week but beyond that as i said the wind direction comes more from north to northwesterly direction in terms of day 10 time frame and you can see these greens moving in which is much cooler air mass temperatures back towards the high teens low 20s peaking 20 21 degrees in the far south probably beyond that low pressure doesn't move in in within another cooler air mass and it generally in the longer term looks cool around or below average much towards 20 degrees high teens for the high temperatures so some people might prefer that a lot more some people might prefer the much cool uh, much warmer conditions we have now so we're going to get sort of the best of both worlds really warm conditions over the next five to seven days and then turning cooler towards the towards the end of june start of july so if we do now have a look at the gm see how that does compare Again, low pressure running in at the moment, high pressure toppling in towards the middle of this week, turning things drier before low pressure runs in, turning things cooler from the northwest, a little bit more unsettled, so shower activity will increase, but we're not seeing any direct hits from low pressure, so no massive weather fronts at this stage, more like these showery outbreaks, disturbances, things like that. And as we head towards day 10, it is generally under higher pressure, not under the centre of the high, so not incredibly dry, still showers around, but generally dry, and hot air is far to our south, so more general, generally around average, and look at the temperature deviation, you see that around, slightly below average really, so not even too bad really, but more in those blues, as those temp upper air temperatures are generally around 5, 6, 7 degrees at 850 HPA this time of year, and we're seeing here sort of 0 to 2 degrees at 850 HPA. So if we do finish by having a look at the Eastern BF and then we'll have a look at the ensembles just to see sort of the, the uncertainty. Again, you can see low pressure spreading at the moment, high pressure then building back in under a, a relatively warm air mass before we do start to see a westerly flow develop with cooler conditions, more of a direct hit there from low pressure, so more unsettled there. Um, and beyond that, we stay milling around with these lows, a lot more unsettled and nothing too cold, nothing too mild. Again, you look at the temperature deviation, it's around or slightly below average, so not looking too great really there. Um, again, I think people don't mind sort of average to below average temperatures as long as it's dry really, but this would be a much more unsettled scenario. So there's uncertainty with regards to what's happening in the longer term. But if we do finish by having a look at the ensembles now, if we do start with the GFS now, it's only going out to the 1st of July at the moment, so next sort of 12 to 13 days. So the uncertain time frame really in the longer term is sort of disregarded here as it's the latest run. You can see incredibly hot at the moment, but reducing significantly over the next couple of hours. And you can see precipitation here, big uncertainty with how much precipitation, precipitation we're going to see in terms of its, because it's thundery uh, showers and that sort of stuff, which ensembles don't really do well because they are low resolution. We do return to average for the next day or two through today and tomorrow before we turn return a good few degrees maybe five degrees above average until sort of the end of this coming working week so that's why mid to high 20s is very possible and widespread low 20s which is above average for all before around the 25th 26th of june we return to around or below average only by a degree or two so back to all sort of 20 degree highs in the south and sort of 15 to 20 degree highs further northwards um but it does look generally dry on most of the ensemble members. Still some precipitation, as we got uncertainty with exact positioning of the low. Um, so we'll have to see really what happens with that. And in the longer term, it's generally around average. Still some spread, so we could see some alterations with this. But at the moment, it doesn't look like anything too hot is coming in the mid to longer range. Just the next sort of five to seven days are we looking at generally warm to warmer than uh, well, warm or very warm conditions, especially in the south. Uh, but as I said, it is more widespread warmth, um, even though it's not hot, it's more widespread warmth, sort of low to mid 20s, even up towards Scotland, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and Northern England are going to be seeing these warmer conditions. Could be warmer this coming working week in those areas than it was on Friday, um, where it was incredibly hot just in the southeast. Now, if we do finish by just having a look at the ensembles for the ECWF. 
again, it's very similar. Warm at the moment, turning around average towards the next day or two, then turning much above average for the sort of three, four days coming in this working week, and then returning below average around that 25th to 28th of June, but for being around average until the start of July. Much more precipitation here. Again, as expected with 50 ensemble members, 20 more than the GFS does have. So we're going to see more spikes, but quite a considerable amount more. So perhaps the Eastern DF ensembles showing more low pressure influence. So it doesn't look like it's going to be bone dry at all. There could be drier days here or there, but there will likely be showery days as well. And we won't know exactly the details on that until we're a couple of days out, unfortunately. So, yes, it does look like generally there's going to be warmer and cooler days over the next week or two. There's going to be days of mid to high 20s. There's going to be days around 20 degrees. So sort of best conditions for all. Everyone's going to have sort of a, uh, uh, going to have um, their sort of weather over the next couple of weeks. But unfortunately, it does look like it's not going to be completely dry. There's going to be showers around, and it's going to be quite unpredictable, as it's likely to be the sort of convective nature of uh, showers, where, as of today, uh, as you see, uh, so the live radar, the models are showing much less precipitation than there is in reality. So this is why it's very, very difficult, especially in the summer, where we've got a lot of it, more, lot more energy around, uh, and showers can spark up a lot faster. Uh, it is very difficult to forecast precipitation, unfortunately. But we'll just have to see what happens in the longer term. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you take the notice of precautions this week as it is still going to be very warm. Yes, it's not quite as hot as the last couple of days, but UV levels will be even higher as we head towards the solstice. solstice and it's going to be very warm, very widely. And heat stroke, things like that can still come into effect even with temperatures in the mid to high 20s so please do take the necessary precautions and of course if you are impacted by heavy rain and thunderstorms over the next day or so do stay safe out there as well uh, and of course with that check the live radar if you've got any plans over the next day or two as i said these showers can pop up very quickly and can dissipate very quickly as well so your rain app could show heavy rain precipitation incoming um, and it could just be uh, dissipating very quickly um, so do check the radar if you have got any plans so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon